uh, take a look at where uh, China is. Now, I mentioned uh, trying to talk about China's zero tolerance policy and how that's working compared with trying to keep its uh, economy under control. Yeah, so we were on the point that, you know, this virus is very contagious. And so with all this snap, snap lockdown, um, it does come with a heavy economic cost. So when we look at service sector, for example, the PMI sub-index fell to 46.7 from 50.5. So it's clear that the service sector, which requires a lot of human contacts, is suffering uh, severely. But that said, I think the government is uh, pushing forward many uh, very effective policies. Uh, for example, with uh, tax cuts and refunds, that would help to save some enterprises about, you know, 2.5 trillion, which is close to 400 billion dollars. Um, but I think the government should still do more uh, when it comes to fiscal support. Yeah, and they're also offering some low interest loans to small businesses as well. But let's take a look at a couple of the huge hubs, Shanghai and Shenzhen, very important. What is the slowdown in manufacturing and service sector doing to China, China's economy? Right. So there are some estimates that these uh, dynamic zero COVID policy could shed as much as 1.8 percentage points um, from China's uh, annual growth. So um, the industrial production is disrupted because of the lockdown. Um, the financial services are trying to keep up. Um, we have heard many sort of innovative practices by businesses that encourage um, their employees to stay in the office mm -hmm. and offer them some cash incentives. So I think businesses are um, very adaptive. They're trying all the ways um, to try to, you know, uh, try to operate their business as usual. Um, so you mentioned that the central bank is trying to um, provide more, you know, low interest loans, and there are some estimates or expectation that there might be RRR cuts or interest rate cuts from the current, you know, 3.7% um, uh, percent one year benchmark interest rates. So these could in some ways help to ease the pain of the small businesses. But I would argue some bolder policies like nationalized, you know, payrolls for some of the medium, small and micro sized enterprises to help them to keep and uh, keep their jobs. Now we're talking about the second largest economy in the world. And of course, external factors are also in place. Ukraine, how is that situation impacting Beijing? Right. So we also see that the new export orders have gone down to 47.2 um, when it comes to the, the PMI index that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So that's lower than the 49 a month earlier. So there are all these export uh, production disruptions because of the supply chain um, issues. Um, as we know that, you know, the war uh, in Ukraine has disrupted many important sort of industrial ingredients um, to the semiconductor chips production. And the softer demand from EU, for example, is also projected to drag down some of the export production and demand. But that said, I think, you know, China still has great competitiveness when it comes to, you know, it has a very complete supply chain domestically, and it has been able to tame inflation at home. So um, I think this would help to um, provide, you know, export production um, going forward. And you're exactly right on those last two points, but it's also looking at big shutdowns in the financial districts. What is that doing? Right. So again, you know, business would rely on financing, right? They need a credit. So the disruption in the financial sector would have negative, negative impact on the businesses. But like I said, you know, many of the financial institutions, and that is quite cross the board, are trying to maintain their businesses as usual by, you know, um, many different innovative practices, like encouraging their employees to stay put and stay in their offices um, and, you know, trying to operate the businesses. Well, make no mistake about it. China's economic growth has been nothing short of amazing in the recent decades, lifting hundreds of millions out of poverty. But is now the time the government need, need to examine policy changes? Right. I think the government is doing some of that. I think it's clear, you know, from the most recent two sessions um, to now the relatively ease in regulatory crackdown, for instance. I think all these suggest that the government has been swift in trying to push forward certain policies that would support a short-term economy and yet without losing sight of that long-term game, uh, long-term sort of plan, for example, sustainability and, for example, technological innovations. So I have the confidence. I think the government will 
will be um, rolling out more policies, which they announced on Wednesday, um, to stabilize the economy in the short run. I want to thank you for your insight and your patience. Yan Liang, professor of economics at Willamette University, thank you so much.